Hey guys, welcome to a bonus episode of the Let's Play Spyro 3. Uh, last, well, last bonus episode we had the, the Yeti, uh, the Yeti boxing thing, and this time we're gonna go after all the skill points in the game. And we're gonna start off here in Sunny Villa. This is, I think, is the first skill point I told you about. You have to get all the trees. I missed the one at the start of the level, but we'll be back for that. Um, if I sound a little weird, it's because I literally like, just got up. It's about 8.30 in the morning right now. I don't know why I'm recording at this time, but it's only post-commentary, so I don't really care. <laughs> so yeah, this level is short enough, so it won't take you that long to get all the trees. Do keep in mind, though, that if you go into one of the um, bonus areas, you have to get them all again, so... And like I said, last one is at the start of the level, and I missed it. The second skill point is also in Sunny Villa. Uh, I've already shown that off in the LP. You just have to get enough points. Um, the list I was looking at says you only need 3,000, but I'm pretty sure it's 3,200 you need. So just to make sure, I'm gonna you know you're, you're gonna notice it's not gonna do anything because I already have the skill point. So yeah, you need uh, 3,200. To, uh, to get this skill point, as far as I know at least. And then we go to Molten Crater. We uh, supercharge the wall, we got that one. And then this one, you have to assemble the Tiki Heads on the central platform. I actually forgot this one existed, surprisingly enough. So um, yeah, while we're doing this, we're listening to some of the music from uh, Spyro 4, because I know I've said that I'm not gonna LP that game because of how glitchy it is and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I do have to give it credit for the music. The music in Spyro 4 is, as in all the Spyros, really good, so uh, yeah, for this whole bonus episode we're listening to some of my, uh, some of my favorite tracks in that game. While well, we're still looking for those tiki hats, I'm kind of—I kind of had trouble uh, finding the last one here, but eventually we do find it. Oh, well, not in there, but it should be in here, I think. Yeah, there we go. And then I had some trouble <laughs> actually picking it up and almost died. That was kind of—that was kind of bad, but oh well. So. uh... Yeah, and if you look, they, they actually start dancing when you collect them all on the central platform. <laughs> kind of funny. And then the fifth one we can find in, in uh, Seashell Shore. We got this in the LP as well, but we can still get this, and it'll still say skill point. That's one nice thing about Spyro 3, in my opinion. Most of the skill points you, get, you can get more than once, so... If you ever need lives, I guess that's a really good way to do it. Uh, and then Icy Peak, uh, Glide to the Pedestal. This one I've... Uh, I might have mentioned, I'm not sure if I did or not, but I did talk about the platform where that, uh, that other thief is standing. Um, we kind we want to get back over there because, uh, well, if we can actually land on that platform, which is, which can be kind of hard to do because it's a really tiny platform, but if you do manage to land on it, you get a skill point. And then the next one is an Enchanted Tower, so you have to get 10,000 points on this one. And this one I actually kind of try to set a record for myself, get as high as I can, and if you want, you can post a video response and try to beat mine. Um, as you can see, Twisted Limes, Twisted Lemons, and I also show off something else during this. Uh, some people told me about this, if you, um, if you spin left five times, you get a big gulp. And if you spin right f uh, five times, you get an orange crush. And there's more references in here. If you roll left four times, you get a Dr. Shemp, which was one of the bosses in Spiral 1, if you might recall. And if you do it to the right, you get Toasty Twist. And Toasty was also one of the bosses in Spiral 1. So pretty cool how many references they packed into uh, this whole skateboarding thing here. Uh, we only have 10 seconds left, so I just tried to do whatever I could, and I end up with a, uh, a final score of 21,000, so you can try to beat that if you want, and post a video response. I'm, I'm, I am curious to see how, uh, how, well you how well you guys do on this. So, um, right here in Spooky Swamp, all we have to do is get the Piranha Signs, which actually does not take a lot of time at all, because Spooky Swamp's not a big level. You want to... You don't want to miss that one that I just got, that one in the little... The one under the rocks, it's kind of it's kind of easy to miss. I missed it my first time, I actually had to redo this, because I kind of wanted to have a perfect run and not like 
run around aimlessly. So uh, right here in Sergeant Bird's base, we want to bomb the gophers. This one can kind of take a while, you just want to get to where the bombs are. Especially because you have to replay the whole level, so... Like, you have to, um... Those things, you have to put them back on the switches. It's actually not that bad, it's worse in the later level. Well, I mean, not, not worse, these levels are fun to play, what am I saying? But I, it makes me kind of wish that I did the skill points as I was going because sometimes I just had to like replay entire levels to even be able to get the skill points. And I think that's everything we have to do as far as backtracking goes to get those. So we go back. I was kind of lazy on killing the enemies. I was kind of like, eh, I don't care. They don't do anything to me. They can't kill me. So sometimes whenever there's enemies around, the gophers don't really come out. So well, you want to be wary of that. And well, there's not going to be anything in this cave. There's, I think, there's one more gopher high up and one more on the ground, if I remember. Yeah, see that one. That one is not coming out because that enemy is there, and you'll see now he comes out. And then there should be one more on the ground, right there. This one, this one's actually kind of weird because I like, I like killed the enemy and then I went back. Like I wasn't. Yeah, I actually managed to get the skill point, like, a little while after I dropped, I dropped the bomb. I don't really know why. This also uh, got kind of glitched out. I don't know why, but he wasn't fighting back. I don't know if it's because I 100%ed I the game or something, but he was not fighting back, so... It's okay, though, because you already saw him. You already saw me beat him in two rounds, legitimately. Uh, during the LP, so that's what you have to do, beat the Yeti in two rounds. And uh, here in Lost Fleet, we uh, want to uh, beat the course record, which is a minute and 45 seconds, which if you boost a lot, you'll get that pretty pretty easily. It's not that hard to do. Yeah, as you can see, uh, on full speed, one lap usually takes about 30 seconds, so... It shouldn't be too hard to uh, get this skill point. Go one more lap, and just try to do as many tricks as you can to build up your speed. I actually I did this after uh, the whole Sasquatch uh, race, and this is just nothing compared to that. Oh my god, there's a lot of failure in that video. <laughs> so we get another skill point, and this uh, this one this would have been useful if I would have gotten this. There's a, a secret in Agent 9's area here in the fireworks factory, and if you see what it is. Uh, You'll see why I kind of wish that I got it, but, uh... We don't really have to do anything here, I kind of just want to kill the box to get the enemies out of the way. But now, we can actually go back, and if you go through... Well, if you open this door, but not go through it and look up, you'll see, like, a red box over there. You want to try to shoot that, and that'll give you a skill point, and it'll also give you this. Which is pretty much 500 shots of rapid fire. Yeah, that would have been really nice to have. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot this existed. And then Charmed Ridge actually has two. The first one, uh, the Impossible Tower, which is actually not that impossible. You just kind of want to go over here, and when you usually go to the egg, you kind of want to... You just want to glide over here. It's not that impossible. It's actually pretty easy to get to. This one, I... Uh, I forgot about it as well. All you need to do is just shoot the windows in the area with the witches. Sometimes the witches get in the way of your shots. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter if you do this during your playthrough of the game, but, uh... Yeah. <laughs> they kinda got in my way. This one in Bentley's outpost we already saw as well. Just push the box off the cliff. And then here in uh, Desert Ruins, you wanna get on the... You wanna go to the underwater part and... Get on the manta ray and shoot all this uh, the seaweed right here. The hitbox on it is a little weird, so sometimes you have to go around a few times. Like you'll notice, sometimes my shots uh, go through or they don't seem to like hit it perfectly. It, it's kind of weird. Yeah, the skill points in this game are way easier than they are in Spyro 2. These skill points did not take me that long at all. That was one that gave me a little bit of trouble, but other than that, they were really easy to get. And then the next one is in Haunted Tomb, where we swim into the dark hole. We saw that one as well. 
Next one is probably the most annoying one of all of them. You have to get all the seahorses in this uh, flooded tunnel. So I guess there is a reward if you kill all the enemies in this one, even though you don't really have to. Nice thing about this is, uh, even though this tunnel can be challenging, you don't have to get them in one go. You, If you hit one, it stays dead, so... As long as you hit all four of them, you'll be, you'll be fine. You don't have to do it in one go. I just repeated myself for no good reason. This one we saw in the LP as well, in the Dino Mines. Shoot the red dino during Agent 9 section. And then for the very last section, we want to use the bombs on Agent in Agent 9's lab, and we want to blow up these pineapple trees, or whatever they're supposed to be. Gigantic pineapples, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this one is um, this one can be kind of annoying as well if you don't do it during the uh, while you're playing through the level because you're gonna have to do everything over again. So until you can get the bombs and then you go back and then you can get all those trees there. Uh, the last trees are actually over here behind this uh, little gate, and that should give us the last skill point. So if we check, we now have. All 20 of the skill points. Let's go over them quickly before we move on to uh, the epilogue. And after that, I have two more bonus episodes for you guys and then the LP will be over. So, 117%. We, uh, we have done pretty much everything in the game right now. All I have left to show off is... Um, well, some, some glitches, I, I can tell you that much. Uh, that I've been promising to show off, and I will after this, so... Some of the stuff in the epilogue is actually kind of interesting. One in particular, um, that I like... <laughs> yeah, Nasty Nork and Ripto uh, hold a summit to discuss the Spyro problem. That's actually, like, um, foreboding for Spyro 4. <laughs> because that's what they planned on doing. Didn't really work out, I've talked about this uh, before. Thank you for playing, we'll miss you. So, that's it for the skill points and the epilogue. See you in the next bonus episode. Thanks for watching and have a good day.